And thank you for joining me again today. Lester Summerall used to tell a story about Smith Wigglesworth that I've thought about over the years and I've shared it with people and always used it in the context of an illustration of Smith Wigglesworth's separation to God. But over time, I'm starting to wonder if there was more to the story than just his willing his separation to God. What Lester said was he... The first time he met Smith Wigglesworth, well, not the first time, I apologize. The first time he went to Smith Wigglesworth's home, he was just a young man in London, and it was fashionable in, in that time for a young man to carry a newspaper underneath his arm. He, Lester and Summerall would talk about walking up to Smith Wigglesworth's door. He knocked on the door. He had his newspaper under his arm dutifully, you know, as a proper young man, had that newspaper with him. And he said that Smith answered the door, yelled at him something like, I will not have that thing in my house, and slammed the door. Lester talked about, Brother Summerall talked about standing at the door, confused, wondering what had just happened. He took the paper, he threw it in the bush, he knocked on the door, and Smith allowed him in. But he would not let him in with that newspaper. Now, if you're not familiar with Smith Wigglesworth's ministry, I, re I recommend you look it up. He was a man mightily used by God throughout the world. He was a plumber who was who never learned to read until his wife taught him to read the Bible. And it was said that the only book he ever read in his life was the Word of God. We've been talking in the past few videos about the Word of God being the seed of God. We started in Mark chapter 4, in verse 14, it says, The sower sows the Word. And then we saw the first type of ground was the wayside ground, and we saw Matthew 13, that Jesus said it was the person who does not understand the Word that is in position for Satan to come and steal the Word. What I'm wondering, was it that Smith Wigglesworth was just so separated to God that he would not read the newspaper? Or did he have a revelation of the principle of seed time and harvest? And he was protecting his garden, his soul. And he would only allow the word of God to be planted in his soul. We don't know for sure. But it's an interesting question to ask. You see, everything you're looking at, everything you hear, is planting something in your soul. I hear things, people talk about, well, it's okay to watch this because it's not necessarily that bad. But everything we look at, everything we hear is planting something within our soul. The Bible talks about life and death is in the power of the tongue. But not just your tongue. When you listen to music, when you are watching sitcoms, you're hearing vocalizations. You're hearing seeds that are being scattered over the ground of your soul. And you have to ask yourself, is this the type of harvest I want in my life? I'm not going overboard and saying, you know, it's always wrong to watch shows or this or that. But what is your priority? That's the question you have to ask. What results do you want? You know, when you're dealing with people, what results do you want from the Word of God? Do you want to experience the power of God? Do you want to walk in the power of God? Do you want to see the power manifesting in your life? Or are you satisfied with just living the status quo Christian life, powerless, doing some good things, serving in your church, and then going to heaven with minimal fruit? Really, the choice is yours. We talk about the Great Commission. And in Mark 16, Jesus said those who believe shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Talked about the dead being raised. Talked about the lepers being cleansed. Blind eyes being opened. He didn't say anything about the fivefold ministry in Mark 16. He said those who believe shall lay hands on the sick. Believing starts with the planting of seed 
in your heart. We must take the word of God. And that's what Jesus was saying in Mark chapter 4, verse 14. The sower sows the word. You will not be in a position to believe if you haven't first taken the time to sow the seed in your soul. We've said it several different times in reference that in Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2, where Paul talks about do not be conformed to this world, but be renewed by the, you know, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you become conformed? The word conformed means to be molded into the image of. We become conformed to this world by allowing the world to plant its seeds within our soul. We become transformed by the seed of God's word when we plant it within our soul. We plant it within our heart. But again, if you're satisfied with just going to church on Sunday morning, and maybe listening to a message or two here too, or having a devotion, you know, 10 minute devotional before you rush out the door to work every day, and then coming home and sitting before the TV to look at the latest headlines, you're not going to live in the power of God. There are people, yes, you can sit down and pray for hours on end. But walking in the fullness of everything God has planned for your life requires you to first plant the seed of God's word in your heart. Everything comes back to seed time and harvest. We started these series of videos talking about you know, developing a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We do not spend the time planting the right seeds in our heart, in our soul, we will not have the right harvest. People have a lack of revelation of the Holy Spirit and His ministry because they have planted the wrong seeds and therefore do not have the proper revelation. What do I mean by that? Well, Jesus tells us that the traditions of men make the Word of God of no effect. Let's take this in the context of what we're talking about, the seed time and harvest. The traditions of men make the seed of God's word of no effect. The traditions of men render the seed of God's word powerless in our lives. Here we go on and we've looked at the first, the wayside. We saw that that's people who don't understand the word. But then in verse 16 it says, These are laid likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with groundness and have no root in themselves, and so endure for time, but then afterwards when affliction comes, or persecution rises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Stony ground is ground that has no depth to it. You have not taken the time to plant the word. You have not taken the time to meditate on it. And this is what we're, you know, traditions. We allow things to become traditions that hinder us from being able to experience everything that God has for us. If you have received Jesus, if you have invited him to be your Lord and Savior, you have the life and nature of God within your spirit. You have been recreated in the image of God. You have the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. It's not a matter of God releasing his power into your life because his power is within you. The illustration I've used in the past couple of ver you know, videos we've talked about we talked about that cleaner that's, you know, we talk about shout. It has the ability to do amazing things with stains. But if you look at the bottle, it has that nozzle that is has an on and off position. If it's in the off position, you can point the bottle all you want at that stain, but it's not going to do anything to that stain. The stain's going to remain and it's going to continue. You have to turn that nozzle of that bottle to on. And the same thing with the Word of God. The Word of God is the seed of God. It is what you plant within your heart, within your soul. But if you're not taking the time to plant it, you will have no depth, no root in your life. You'll have the power of God within you. You have the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. But what benefit is it to you if it's not being allowed out to affect your physical being, your finances, your natural life for those around you? You make the change by taking that nozzle, turning it on, which is your soul, which Paul said in Romans chapter 12, is the, he called it the renewing of the mind. And it's not enough just to be sitting, you know, minute after minute, day after day. 
just reading a 30-minute devotional or going to church on Sunday and then throwing your Bible on a shelf until the next Sunday. This takes commitment. This takes time to plant the Word of God, to allow it to take root and give it time. But not only that, you have to be taking time to plant the Word in your soul. You have to take the time to be planting the Word in your heart and then water it in prayer, water it in times of spending time fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. And that's what Paul was talking about, the love of God, the, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all in the last verse of 2 Corinthians. As you commune with the Holy Spirit, as you spend time in prayer, praying over the seed that you've planted within your heart, you're watering that seed. So you can actually you know, accelerate the growth cycle by spending time watering. But what happens is people try to pray. They try to cry out to God. They try to you know, spend all this time without planting the seed. But if the seed is not first planted, all you're doing is watering an empty patch, patch of ground with no seed in it. You're not going to see any harvest grow up in that. One thing people struggle with in this area, they will go day after day living their lives. You know, they'll get home from work, they'll be tired, so they sit down in front of the TV, turn on the television, and everything, as we've said, is a seed. Everything you're seeing, everything you're hearing are seeds being planted in your soul. Jesus said, they, these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive with gladness and have no root in themselves. They have no root because they haven't taken time to sow the word, but instead they've been sowing other things. As we go on and look at this, you'll see in one type, you know, we'll see that, that there are thorn bushes growing in the ground that will choke out the word of God. A thorn is a form of a weed, and you can literally, you know, I like to think of it as a weed seed. And it seems a little bit extreme, but just as a way of thinking, and we have to, you know, balance things out, be led by the Spirit of God. I'm not saying there will be never a time when you're not looking at news headlines or anything like that. I'm not saying an extreme, but it's something we need to think about and ponder and meditate upon. What if at the end of the day you sat down and thought, well, I'm tired, so I think I'm just going to plant some new seed, news weed seed in my mind. Or sitcom weed seed. Different way of looking at it. Everything, as we saw in Genesis chapter 8, begins with seed time and harvest. What are we planting in, in, into our souls? And see, what happens is a lot of times where Jesus talked about the word, you know, the traditions of men make the word, make the seed of no effect. We have traditions, and the Holy Spirit will reveal those to us as we spend time with it. But like I, you know, and I said a couple of videos ago, what we do though a lot of times is replace the word with words about the word. So we replace God's seed that He gave us with other seeds that describe the seed. What do I mean by that? Well, we may have a, a favorite minister that we want to, that we really enjoy listening to, that God's spoken to us through. And so we take their book and we spend time reading their books. And we can quote this author, that author, this author. But are we taking the Word of God as we're reading those books, looking up references, meditating, looking at context of the references and the chapters they're referring, or are we just looking at what they say? I think back to my time in Bible school when I was, you know, we, I had professors that would assign us papers. We'd write the paper, and we were required to have at least three concord, you know, commentaries that we referenced. But we were not required to reference the Word of God itself. And I used to really struggle with that because I didn't want to just talk about what Dr. So-and-so said about the Word. I wanted to reference the word itself, and I was in Bible college, so it seems like you should be referencing the word. But this is how we're trained, and this is how not just you know ministers, but that's how Christians will end up. And I've I've had conversations with people talking about well, so and so said this, and so and so said this, but what does the word say? Because we're planting seeds 
about God's seed instead of planting God's seed itself within our hearts. The choice is really up to us, and that's where God said, I've set before you today life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. How do we choose life? We choose life by choosing his word. It is important for us to be listening to anointed messages. There will be men and women that he'll lead us to, that he'll, we'll listen to. But we, you know, we read their books. But we can't just stop there. We have to have the Bible. We have to be looking at it. I was talking about in a previous video, we have to be taking this, this, you know, as we study the Word, as we're meditating on the Word, looking at it. It needs to become revelation within our hearts. But we should keep a notebook. You know, even if we've taken notes on that message, we should keep a you know, notebook with us. So as the Holy Spirit starts revealing and opening things up to us, we'd be able to take notes. We need to show that we're valuing it. The more you respect the Word, the more time you spend with the Word, the more you will find it opening up to us. And I mentioned previously in Ephesians chapter 1, Paul talked, you know, gave us a prayer starting in verse 17. And that's a great prayer to pray over yourself as you're studying the word, putting it in first person. God of our Lord Jesus Christ, give unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of you. Let the eyes of my understanding be opened. Because we can make the word of God an intellectual exercise, or we can make the word of God the seed that it is. And we can approach it with reverence, knowing that it is the seed that can, contains the ability to turn that nozzle within our soul from off to on, allowing the life of God that was placed in our spirit when we were when we became a Christian, when we were, went through the process the Bible calls being born again, to allow that more, you know, that life that's already within us to be released out into the world. In John chapter 4, to the women of the wish, at the well, we saw Jesus talked about that it would be a, a well of living water springing up within you, talking about salvation. Many people stop right there. They have that well of living water within them. It benefits them. They're blessed by it. But they don't go on. They don't allow it to, they don't spend time planting with their soul within their heart. They don't allow it to germinate, to, you know, to begin to grow, to release that life out to the world around them. In John chapter 7, Jesus talked about it should be a, a river of water flowing out of you. See, the choice is yours. You can accept the status quo Christian life. Hear a message on Sundays, go about your life. God's not going to love you any less. But he has so much more for you. We saw in a few a few videos ago in Galatians chapter one, where Paul said that he had been separated from his mother's womb to the minister to his ministry to the heathen. But what would have happened if Paul had never obeyed that calling, had never taken the time to spend with the word to allow it to release the life that was in him out to the heathen? Would we have ever heard of Paul? No, but would it have changed the fact that he was called, that he was separated from his mother's womb? It wouldn't have changed anything. You can have a call of God on your life. You can, you know, God had a plan for your life before you were even born. That plan was put in place before you were even conceived. But the choice of whether you walk in the fullness of that plan, the choice of you, you know, accomplishing all that God has called you to do is up to you. He said, I set before you, you know, life and death. The life is set before you in the word of God. Just like Jesus said in Mark chapter 4, verse 14, the sower sows the word. We take the word of God, we sow it into our soul, into our heart, and we continue to sow, we continue to sow. In Hebrews chapter 6, he talked about, be not slothful, but through faith and patience you inherit the promise. It takes patience, it takes time to allow the word to germinate, to begin to grow, to begin to take effect. We're coming to the end of this video, and I'll just close here. You know, going back to Mark chapter 40, we talked about the mustard seed previously. Jesus said in verse 30, in Mark chapter 4, verse 30, Where unto shall we liken then the kingdom of God, with what comparison? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becomes greater than all herbs and shoots out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. I've heard people talk about the mustard seed, and we referenced this a few videos ago, as being the smallest seed and how God can do great things with the smallest things. 
But for thought process, I'll just throw this out to you. The one thing about the mustard seed, when you look at it compared to other herbs, is the quality of the mustard seed. When you plant a mustard seed, some studies show that the, the root system can be as much as five feet deep in the ground. That's incredible. It starts with a very tiny seed, the smallest of all seeds, but it grows to a root system over five feet. So when it grows up, it's not going to be blown by the storms or anything like that because it has such a deep root system. When we plant the Word of God and allow it to take root within our heart and continue to plant the Word and continue to plant the Word of God, what are we doing? We're giving it time to grow deep so that when it begins, when we see the life of God begin flowing out, when persecution, you know, rises for the Word's sake, and Satan's not coming against you because of you, he's coming against you because of the Word within you, you will not be shaken because you've given time to allow the Word to take root within your heart and to grow deep like that mustard seed, and to grow that deep root system within the Word. So you will not be shaken. You will not fall when persecution comes against you. Well, our time is up today. I thank you for joining me again. <clears throat> and if you have a prayer request or a praise report that you would like to share, we'd love to hear it. Please place it in the comment section. Thank you, and God bless. <music>